This week I'm driving the Refresh 2024 Volvo XC40 Recharge. This is the new Refresh with the single motor extended range coming in at $60,000 in this top ultimate grade. Is it worth that chunk of change? Today we'll find out. Let's check under the hood. Nice to have those double shocks and Volvos are notorious or you could say famous for having very vertical hood openings. Uh, the XC60 I had a while back was even more vertical. But underneath the hood here, there's actually not a motor up front like I had in previous model years. We have the charger, which now this rear wheel drive model can charge up to 200 kilowatts. They say 10 to 80% in about 28 minutes, if I remember correctly. The dual motor still only charges at about 150 kilowatts. I'm gonna close this because there's not much to see under there. Very satisfying hood click. This is built in Belgium and this is supposed to get around 293 miles of range with about 77 kilowatt hours of usable battery. That rear motor powering these staggered wheels. These are 255s in the back and these are 235s in the front so you won't be able to rotate them all four uh, the traditional way. But we have 248 horsepower back here uh, to the rear wheels and about 310 pound-feet of torque. It's a nice uh, rear wheel drive feeling vehicle. I wouldn't call it sporty as well. We'll talk about it when we start driving. But it is adequate to keep up uh, in town and I've been using it to drive my parents to the airport this week. So I got a lot of highway driving. I also been taking it uh, to drop my kids off at school. So we got a lot of city driving. So I'll be able to give you guys a really good impression uh, with the range, uh, the rear wheel livability, etc. All right, so with the front end, uh, they have changed a few things with the, the past couple of years, but they refreshed the styling up here, I think for the 23 model year. And so they removed the bezel. So it's a little bit, see more seamless here they also revised this area this used to be um, more of just like one big long oval piece now they've added a little bit more depth and character around those fog lights parking sensors here on the front uh, it's a very beautiful design this design came around in 2019 i think when this generation of xcy it's the only generation of xc40 came out on the market and it, it still looks incredible to this day uh, thor's hammer daytime running lights here and when I walk out of the car with the key, it turns off. So that's why the lights are off right now. But this also doubles as your, your daytime running light. You got like quad beam LEDs on top of there, which I don't remember on the uh, pre-refresh. On the side, we have these 20 inch wheels and we have turn indicator uh, LED signals here on the side mirror. This Ultimate has 360 camera. It's got the panel roof. It looks really, really nice. And let's go ahead and get into the back here. Uh, recharge. That's one of the ways you know um, it's the plug-in. And the other way we know it's fully electric is from the front. The gas models, the B5, for example, will have a much more porous grill. We just have very little grill openings here. I think this has active shutters. Yep, I feel them in there. Active shutters here, of course. So let's get on the back here of the XC40. Very typical for Volvo with the vertical uh, rear tail lights, the D-pillar tail lights. Recharge here. Now, the twin motor will say twin motor. So it just kind of feels like it's lacking with that badge. Volvo across the back here. Very, very handsome rear end. Let's lift up this hatch and flat floor, flat loading floor underneath. Um, well, you could put the charging cable under there if you wanted to. And underneath that, well, it's a jack, but there's no spare tire in here unfortunately i don't have a tonneau cover on this but i know that's uh, available you can just see where it would clip in right there i'm folding on the seats it's actually quite easy from back here headrest fold down you can see it's completely flat loading floor it's very very impressive and since it is more of a boxy design you get some really nice cargo capacity here with those seats folded down so let's go ahead and close that rear lift gate here's your charging port but just been using my level two at home uh, does a good job charging on my about 3.7 kilowatts of charging. All right, material, soft touch here on the door. It's all pretty monochrome besides the handle. It all is black, but at least we have this nice carpeted uh, door liner on the inside. This Ultimate also has this wool option. It doesn't cost you much more, but keep in mind, it will not come with ventilated seats. And we do have a cup holder back here. And these seats are not 
adjustable. You can't recline them. And I did put my newborn in here. He's not a newborn anymore already. He's a couple months old, but it's really easy to get back here and access those child uh, anchors. Uh, we do have mat pockets on each side. I do have heated outboard seats, a couple USB-Cs back here. Uh, the vents are nice and close. Good enough leg room, headroom. Excellent here at six foot one. Do appreciate the wool back to the sea. I mean, it's just really nice. Here's that little wool blend performance tag. Very, very nice. But I don't see, where's the, where's the Swedish flag? I don't see the Swedish flag here. Maybe since it's been made in Belgium, we don't have that Swedish flag. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the front seat. And we do have smart access here on all four doors, which I really, really appreciate with the kiddos. So get into the front thigh extension manual i love it it's great for people with longer legs beautiful wool blend seats here the materials are pretty much the same as the back but now we have these illuminated topography trim which looks really nice at night uh, we also have memory seats up here um, and harman kardon sound system is quite fantastic but i believe it's only on this ultimate grade if i remember right all right when you get in the radio starts playing even if you had it off previously and the car's on um, there's no start stop button in here when it senses the key in the front seat the car turns on and you're ready to start driving more topography map here on the dash it doesn't do anything for me during the day it does not look premium during the day only at night does it show its true nature but for 60k I would, I would be looking for something a little bit nicer than this especially for the daytime soft touch dash there's that Harman Kardon center speaker very very nice sound system in here it's not as uh, loud or as powerful as let's say the Bowers and Wilkins but it does a good job here in this smaller XC40 a couple USB-C's down here 12 volt wireless charger I don't remember seeing a crystal from Sweden on previous XC40, so I love having that. I have a couple strange storage places in here um, on this vehicle. I, I don't know what they're there for, but you guess you could hide a pack of cards or a stick of gum in there. And this is rubber lined. I don't see an uh, a, a illumination light, but you can charge your key down there if you need to. I do like the AC system in here. I love how the um the vertic the vertical uh, vents have no restriction hitting me it's uh, very well laid out the screen maybe a little bit small by today's standards but we do have google built in which comes with its pros and cons um, if i use let's say the charging button here it's going to take me to the nearest charging stations take me to disney magic kingdom magic kingdom park all right all right so they're saying if I arrived there, I would only have 8% of battery left. So they're saying, hey, we're going to have you stop in Puna Gorda for charging. Um, and so, yeah, it'll only take about 15 minutes to recharge to get there. So it's nice that they offer, uh, you know, charging routes on the way. That's something that Android Auto would not be able to do. Speaking of Android Auto, there is no Android Auto. My phone, a Google phone, cannot oh sorry yeah i said the g word <laughs> it cannot display or mimic or duplicate its uh software here on the screen only apple carplay um which is a bit frustrating for us google owners there's a little range assistant here i'll talk about range when we start driving i never use this it's pretty much worthless um i typically either keep up uh the maps which is very familiar to me i like using google maps or I like using or uh, putting up the uh, the radio station here, which is real real nice to be able to very easily select your favorite um, stations here. If I want Fish Radio, for example, real easy to heart or star, and then you just go to favorites, and then you can fly through your favorites with these pre uh, preset buttons here. Volume up and down. I like this steering wheel. It's very classic Volvo, very minimal has a real nice uh, girth to it. Stitching on here is pretty impressive. You know, it would have been nice to have a little bit of contrast when maybe a different color stitching. Behind the screen is, if I just put it into drive, behind the screen, we have a customizable, uh, well, yes, Volvo's in their safety, right? We'll talk about the safety in a little bit, um, but closing that down, I can put the map up here and that way I can have my radio over here. Unfortunately, I have no ability to put my radio over here and I have no head up display either, but it tells me my range, my battery, it tells me the map. And if I put in uh, an address, it will show me 
the step-by-step -step turn directions here um, on the screen, which is fantastic. Very minimal though. I can take that map off or I can put it on. And then this is the only information I have. 25 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. It's four miles per kilowatt hour multiplied by the 77 usable uh, kilowatt hours here. And that's my city range. It's a little over 300 miles of city range. And I'll talk about the highway range here in a little bit. Um, with that being said, I'm ready to start driving uh, the new refreshed Volvo XC40. <laughs> we have the Volvo here in drive. You hear a really mild hum. It's not nearly as annoying as Toyota or Hyundai's or even Honda's synthetic electric vehicle noise hums that they're required to bake into the vehicle by the government. This is very pleasant, very mild. It's not distracting. And this is actually the first time I've heard it in daily traffic. I never ever hear it. So well done Volvo and not annoying me with your synthetic electric vehicle spaceship noises. All right, immediately when you start driving here, um, there's a, a considerable heft to the pedal. So what does that do? Well, it helps you be very accurate when it comes to efficiency here. Both the gas pedal and the brake pedal feel very, very well weighted. Um, and there is one pedal driving in here and all you do to access it is go into the settings and you go to driving and then you go to on auto. I've tried that and it was a little bit nauseating. So um, here we are in one pedal driving into the morning sun and uh, yeah, the sun literally just came up. So you might, you guys might have not the greatest view. I apologize for that. Uh, but we'll start heading north and get out of the, the early morning sun's glare. Yeah, the one pedal driving, it is actually really, really good. I still don't prefer to use it. Um, I'm still more, I can't, I honestly can't see if I have a green arrow. I can't see at all. <laughs> the sun is literally hovering over um, the, uh, the stoplight or green light, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to take one pedal drive off and let's start talking about the acceleration here because the previous xc40 only dual motor all-wheel drive 400 horse the thing is an absolute sleeper rocket pedal down here it's pretty it's pretty darn peppy for city driving immediate 310 pound feet of dork it takes off it pushes you back just a little bit but for 60k i'm actually wanting a little bit more than that the dual motor is around 250 miles. This is roughly 300 miles on paper. On the highway though, to going on the interstate, what was my rear wheel driving? Uh, ranging from 60, 80 miles per hour. I wasn't able to stay constant due to real world situations, people slowing up uh, and then speeding up. I was getting, I'll put on the screen for you guys. I think it was a little over three uh, miles per kilowatt hour. And I'll do the math for you on the screen. I think it was around 250 miles, if I remember correctly, with this sort of highway driving I would be doing. Uh, again, that was not like 80 miles sustained. And there's just a hair amount of city driving mixed in to get to the interstate and back from the interstate from my house, which is only maybe about six or seven miles or so. Um, so with one pedal driving off, you get off the gas pedal or the accelerator and it just coasts. It's really, really nice, but there's no customization. I can't just have a little regen. All regen, once one pedal driving is disabled, all regen is done through the brake pedal, which is fine. Speaking of that, um, one of the things I missed on the plug-in hybrids, XC60, XC90, S60, etc. There is a creep function in the settings, which is just not available here. Um, and creep allows you, you can disable it and it'll keep the car stopped when you get off the gas pedal if one pedal driving is disabled. That's not here. The only thing I have is one pedal driving on or off. There's no mention of creep. And um, that threw me for a loop, but luckily through the, the help of Google, I found out if you mash the brake pedal at a stop, it will enable auto brake hold for you, even though there's no dedicated button in here or anything in the menu for auto brake hold. Uh, so that is an awesome feature that I really, really appreciate. You just hit the brake pedal when you're at a stop um, and then you can rest your foot. You don't need to keep it applied to the brake pedal as you wait forever at the stoplight. Road noise in here. Well, on the highway, it started to creep up, but in city, it's so quiet, so smooth. And even on the highway with no engine vibrations, 
it's very, very smooth. Most of the noise you're getting is tire noise and road noise, but it was still very pleasant. And I could take this on a long trip. You just gotta make sure you plan uh, to, to stop and charge along the way. The Ultimate trim, of course, gives you the Harman Kardon, but also gives you highway steering assist. I don't like using it that much, um, to be honest, uh, because it does the steering wheel does fight you quite a bit. This road is extremely rough and bumpy, and the Volvo's do an amazing job here. For 2024, I believe they've revised the suspension a little bit, um, and it is it is very very impressive. It's just a hint sporty, but it's mostly luxury. It's mostly soft and cushy. There's no roughness in the suspension anymore. It's very impressive. I'm gonna hit the sewer cap. Perfect. Um, there's no creaks or rattling. So in terms of build quality and luxury, I like spending time in here. These Volvo uh, wall seats are great. Again, no ventilation. I do have a heated seat and heated uh, steering wheel, but no ventilation here on these wool seats. But that's okay because they breathe really nicely compared to leather or fake leather. Here we go, we get to push it a little bit. This is the only turns I have here in Florida is catching a, a green light at speed. <laughs> I got the steering set to firm. Huh? Definitely feels rear wheel drive and it's awesome. It feels great, super smooth. I really enjoy driving this car. But is it worth, well, what happened here? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Someone in his SL500 just got high centered on the median. I don't know if you guys saw that. All right, but yeah, I $60,000 for this Ultimate. It, I don't think it's worth it in this rear wheel drive. What about like the base model? Is it worth it? And the answer is, I don't think so. And the reason is I'd be happy to get a slightly used dual motor for way less money than this would cost new. So that's, Volvo finds himself in a rough space here. Yes, this is better than the old models. More efficient, better range, slightly improved looks, uh, rear wheel drive option for, for better efficiency. But to me, it's just, and I'll hit, the, I'll hit the gas here when it turns green to give you guys that, you know, immense acceleration that I wish I was having with the dual motor. And it doesn't launch hard. After about 20 mile an hour, I feel like it gives you the full beans. Uh, it starts accelerating harder then, but it does not launch hard like the dual motor does, unfortunately. But it is satisfying. And when I was on the highway driving, I was wanting more passing power. It's not bad, and it's better than most gas cars because you have it instantly, but I wanted more. And I would be happy to get a slightly used model here. I know it's, I'm comparing apples to oranges, but that's the reality. The reality is this is not only competing against its competition, but not only like the GV60 from Genesis that I mentioned, but also the, the Hyundai Ioniq competition, for example, the Teslas, the more mainstream models out there that come in at a lower price point um, and offer the same, if not better performance, same safety features. That's, the, that's what we're up against. So electrification has really leveled the luxury game in my opinion, um, and you're seeing mainstream models, although costly, be able to compete with these more traditional luxury EVs. But like I said, it's not only competing against other brands, it's competing against its former self and used models of the GV, uh, sorry, used models of the XC40 that to me are 99.9% .9 as good. I think it's a fantastic car. I think this should cost a little bit or quite a bit less money and I'd be happy to get a used uh, XC40 recharge for a fraction of the price and way more power and acceleration as well. Let me know down below, is the XC40 at any price worth it here in 2024 as the competition heats up? We have more and more options on the market from the fifty dollars to $60,000 range, not only from the luxury but the mainstream and then also slightly used models creeping up on the market with really low price points due to EVs not holding their value as well. And if you want an amazing electric car that doesn't have to look like a weird spaceship, this is an amazing option. Volvo styling inside and out is probably its greatest strong suit as well as its minimalism when it comes to technology. Um, I, I love this car. I could easily see myself 
be happy owning and driving this on a daily in the dual motor and the dual motor um, but for the price point it's really hard for me to wrap my head around when there are other single mo uh, single motor options out there that cost a fraction of this um, and give me equal if not better range as well with that being said I'll catch you guys in the next video. It's hard to wrap this up because the electric vehicle market, there are just so many factors baking into it right now. So it's hard for me to give it um, a final, I guess, opinion. But I do like the dual motor. Don't go for the single motor. Um, the efficiency isn't that big of an upgrade. And I could always, always use that extra horsepower. I can't always use an extra range. So keep that in mind. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.